Welcome to Manhattan Project. This is day Biente Siete. I think that means 27. Today I went to the Regal Ewok Cinemas to go see Do It Like an Ombre. Take a look at that vlog. Never gonna give you up, never gonna let Wasn't that a special vlog? So Do It Like an Ombre tells the story of two childhood friends one of whom finds out that his friend is now gay and he just can't deal with it. He really wants to cure him of his gayness. Watch that trailer. So I was curious because this movie is breaking a lot of records in Mexico and other Latin American countries. And I know that it stars big stars and I've seen a couple Pentelion releases and they've been solid. So I was curious in that regard, but the premise did seem a little problematic to me. So I wasn't that excited to go see it. Do It Like an Ombre is not even a movie. It's a sad excuse for what happens when you take a sitcom premise from 1994 and stretch it out to nearly two hours in 2017. The biggest problem with Do It Like an Ombre is not actually the gay panic idea behind it all, but the fact that our lead character is just awful. He's one of the shittiest, least empathetic characters I've ever seen in a movie. At the very start of the movie, we learn that what he loves is expensive cars and, oh yeah, cheating on his pregnant wife. That's how he gets introduced to the movie. He's just a guy who constantly wants sex. He's the most dinosaur macho guy in the world. And it's so hard to even get on board with watching him change at all in this movie when what he starts at is such an asshole point. You just can't believe that any of the characters in this movie would like him, would want to hang out with him, would want to put up with any of his bullshit. Because, you know, as soon as he learns that there's something potentially gay, he reacts to just anything remotely not macho with complete disgust. This movie's idea of a set piece or of a joke is that someone says something, you know, oh, they're talking about pencils or sausages, which of course could be a reference to a penis, so he's going to be disgusted by it. It's ridiculous what the movie's sense of humor is and what its idea of people being disgusted by homosexuality. You don't even want to laugh at him because the jokes they're using are not funny enough in the first place. The movie's treatment of women is also pretty horrible. The friend character who does come out of the closet is engaged to a woman and he has to break up with her. And she's just portrayed as the most self-interested, self-centered, shrewish woman. The main joke with her is that she talks really fast and doesn't listen to people when they talk to her because she's too concerned with herself. It's natural that she'd be a little shocked to learn that her fiance that she's been dating for five years is gay, but her reaction is also just very not empathetic, just makes her come across like a total bitch. This movie has no respect for gay people, no respect for women, and honestly no respect for men because it treats them with such little regard to think that they would act this way. And yes, the side characters do repeatedly make jokes that this is 2017, you should be okay with gay people. But that joke's not that funny. It's a little funny when characters are completely straightforward and deadpan earnest, like the first time. But when the movie isn't actually interested in those characters, just in this one asshole guy, then what's the point? Everyone in the movie says, you're so retrograde in your beliefs. You should be more comfortable. You need to get over this. But the movie has really nothing to say about why homophobia exists. It takes the idea of trying to cure a gay person way too lightly. In real life, that's a really horrifically offensive thing, and they played off for laughs time and time again, while once again not investigating on any level why this guy is so completely homophobic, what sort of insecurities he has in life, what problems he's trying to deal with. His big discovery is just, wow, I guess I'm really a selfish person, and my friend is cool and isn't any different, so I shouldn't be mean to him. But the idea of homophobia is something that, if it exists in Latin American culture, that that should perhaps be examined? No, not at all. It's either just his friends who are like, you're weird, or him who is weird and yet is still treated like a great guy. He's not really expected to change beyond the barest minimum. The movie is structured as him going through the five stages of grief to realize that his friend is gay. 
which adds structure to the movie, but once again, it's still kind of offensive. What, he just has to come to accept that his friend's gay? Sure, but does he really learn a lesson about homophobia at all? I don't think so. I could keep yelling about this movie, but there's not that much to say, because it's a comedy that's not funny, it has a lead character who's horrible, it treats women awful, the side characters get no development, I guess this is making a lot of money because it stars popular actors, but I have a really hard time imagining that this is going to click with anyone who isn't that familiar with the people involved because it has so little value to offer. Do It Like an Ombre is like pocket lint. You just want to scoop it up and throw it out. It's a zero out of four. That's what I'm giving it. It's not even a fascinatingly bad movie. It's just boring for an hour and 15 minutes. If you like the movie, I'm sorry. Not trying to be mad at you. Before you go, why do you think it's Breaking Records? John wants to watch Breaking Records. I don't know. I mean, it's a broad comedy. People like that. I recognize one or two of the actors from some other projects before, but I'm not that familiar with them. I'm guessing they're popular. I really can't say why a movie like this would break records. It's just because it's just not that funny. That's the thing. I mean, not movies, especially comedies, don't always have to be the most culturally sensitive thing. I get that. I've seen Adam Sandler movies too, and I laugh at them. But I laugh at them because I at least think some of the jokes are funny. Here, I just was really shocked at how little got to me. Even the non-homophobia humor, just like the other humor, was just like, really didn't, really didn't do it for me. I think the main guy really commits to the role. He goes really over the top. But the character is just so awful. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. This is The Manhattan Project. We review a new movie every single day. So hopefully we'll be back with a movie we actually like and can talk more constructively about tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next... <laughs>